Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. I just realized that I'm actually going to be away out of town this weekend, so I thought I was going to start some of these videos then, but with myself being out for a couple of days thereafter, um, it's going to be a while if I wanted to wait till then, so I thought I would squeeze some of the suggestions here um, with regards to these videos, try to get maybe two or three out before the end of the week. And then I'll finish the rest next week when I come back from my trip. So thank you as always for your suggestions. Please keep them coming. I'll be able to take a look at some more suggestions throughout the week and throughout next week. And this one in particular is a perfect example of what I look for when it comes to your suggestions. Something that is original. Something that is fascinating. Something that is very interesting something that I would love to essentially talk to you uh, the fans of my videos here so that way we can all share in this great stuff together and what I'm talking about with this particular urban legend and the suggested one is about a man that's called the man from Taured I hope I'm saying that right but Taured is spelled T-A-U-R-E-D and so I'm just stating it phonetically but sure enough, whenever I read this particular, uh, sto the stories associated with this particular urban legend, I definitely had to share it with everybody here. So, what is or was the man from Taured? You have to go back to a good number of decades, and that was around 1954 to be exact. So this was not something that's new. And it's a one-time incident, but ever since then, it's been an incident that has been talked about since those decades. And you have to go, not just 1954, but a specific location, and in this case, it's Japan, as Tokyo Airport. And this is what happened. Uh, one day in 1954, at a Tokyo airport that was experiencing a pretty busy schedule that day. Lots of people coming in, lots of business, uh, a whole bunch of passengers both departing and going and staying there. And what had happened was one passenger stood out among the rest, not because of the way he looked, not because of the way he acted, but because of what he presented. And this is what I mean. So the usual custom associated with uh, passengers arriving, especially those arriving from other countries, is you have to go through a custom line of sorts and you have to present an ID, which is usually a passport. And this particular passenger presented his passport and this is what caused everything to suddenly halt. Now again, how the passenger looked did not create any kind of buzz. Uh, I'll describe essentially how he was described um, by others there. And he was a tall Caucasian man, he looked European in fact. Um, he was uh, of generic build, uh, nothing stood out in terms of, of his appearance. He just looked like your average Caucasian, I guess you could say European. and he actually spoke fluent Japanese so anything involving the dialects there there was no conflict associated with him trying to communicate one thing and them not understanding uh, what he was saying there no in fact he was able to speak fluent Japanese so that just added more to the curiousness associated with this urban legend so what caused everything to screech to a you know, blinding halt was the fact that he presented a passport. This passport was unlike any other passport anybody there had ever seen. There was a passport that was issued from a country called Taured, and again, that's spelled T A U R E D. I've never heard of Taured. I'm sure you all have never heard of Taured as well. But here he was presenting a passport that looked 100% official. It's about as official as passports can get. Those of you that have passports know what I'm talking about. Those of you who have maybe even seen passports, not necessarily have them, but have seen them, know what I'm talking about as well. They have a distinct look. They're made of a certain type of material. They have certain photographs associated with them depending on the country that they're from and all in all they have a certain theme they look a certain way they feel a certain way so this one did not stand out in that regard but again what stood out was the fact that the issuing country said 
Tau Red. And so when one of the agents there asked him where Tau Red was located, uh, located, that's when he was able to present to them that he spoke fluent Japanese. And so he responded to them as such. And he told them that Tau Red was a small country in Europe, specifically nestled between France and Spain. And so still, the agent there had no idea where that was, I'm sure, mainly because it's, he's never heard of it, just like you and I have never heard of it. And so they asked this strange man, who now they're now considering a little bit strange at that point, they produced a map and they told him, okay, tell us exactly where Tau Red is. And so this man pointed at a spot where it's, in, you know, it's somewhere around Spain, which you'll see a picture of here. It's, it's purportedly a place called the Principality of Andorra that Tau Red is supposed to be at. And he, when, he, when he showed him that, that just added more to the confusion because maybe the agents there realized there is no such thing as Tau Red. And even then, being there in Spain, there is, they've never heard of anything being in Spain called Tau Red as well. And then that's when apparently they produced uh, some other maps to try to have him point to, but he kept pointing to the same location. And now not only were the agents getting confused, but the man himself was getting confused as well because he started realizing that any map that was being produced, his country, Tau Red, was not there. And in fact, he did not only have this passport as proof they must have apparently asked him for other proof as well and so he produced a driver's license issued by Tau Red and then he also produced apparently he must have had you know his business documents with him uh, maybe he was on a business trip of sorts because he was able to produce banking statements that looked official and he was able to produce miscellaneous business papers that looked official all of them stating his country as being from Tau Red and um, everything that, that was there that was presented looked 100% official and again you have to go back to the year 1954 this wasn't a time when Photoshop was around when people could easily fake certain items on paper like banking statements or maybe even utility bills they didn't have necessarily the ability to scan items copy and paste place them onto paper and have them print out as such instead here he was presenting 100 percent official looking papers as official as banking statements utility bills driver's licenses passports and so forth should look and they all said Tau Red on them as the country of origination. Somewhere along those papers, they would all say Tau Red. And yet, um, here he was presenting it, but yet nobody was again able to discern that Tau Red existed. And this was something that he was realizing as well. So, uh, apparently there was a quote-unquote eerie silence in the interrogation room once all those documents were presented. And the man realized himself just what kind of predicament he was so the custom agents took him into an interrogation room and they kept him there as is uh, apparently they kept him for a good long time about eight hours um, they kept asking him questions um, he kept answering to the best of his knowledge uh, with regards to his information on the country of Tau Red um, he said, in fact, that he was traveling from Japan, I mean, to Japan from Trial Red for the past five years without any particular issues. And the proof, and this is, so, again, what's so fascinating about the story, the proof comes from the passport. When he showed them the passport, sure enough, they could see the pages that had been stamped with the official entry point for each time that he entered Japan. Probably it was the same stamp that's used as Japan as that any other passenger had on their regular passport say any American passport or Russian passport or any other type of passport but here he was with his the passport from Tau Red and he was he was showcasing the very same stamp that was used for the past five years without any single problem on there and that was again so so fascinating because how do you get that proof there's only one way to do so, and that is to make uh, to have a custom agent all those times uh, be able to inspect them 
that's that particular passport stamp it and say it's okay it's good to go and then he was on his way so he also produced a phone number to the business that he works for and because he, he was apparently there again on business and so they called this company it was a legitimate business I'm sorry it was not a legitimate business because they found that the company did not exist and yet he must have had some paperwork there again pertaining to his visit associated with uh, doing something for that company so here they were again in a predicament where they have a man who's producing all sorts of identification for a country that they never heard of and then probably producing identification for a company uh, I'm sorry uh, yes for a company that they've tried to verify it looks legitimate but the company does not exist so finally they got everybody got to the point where things were going nowhere so they decided to get this man to a hotel room and keep him overnight and they would start to figure out what exactly to do with him I guess at that point he wasn't necessarily a threat because by that point um, he hadn't displayed anything that would cause them to be a threat it's just that in his case he was somebody who was just at a location it could not prove who he was and so they wanted to be more cautious to be better safe than sorry in other words and that way they could put him in the hotel room keep him there and do follow-up investigations and find out exactly just what the heck is going on so the hotel room and this is another interesting point um, with this particular urban legend the hotel room that they placed him was nearby the airport he was escorted there by both the custom agents and the police apparently the police were getting in on this particular action they wanted to make sure now that they were alerted to this mysterious man that again he is not a risk to anyone and so they put him in a hotel room but what's distinct about this is that they put him in a hotel room several floors up from any kind of ground and on top of that they placed him in a room where there was no balcony no inter like outer exterior part where he could walk out of the room uh, nothing that you would normally see in hotel rooms that allow you to open like the patio and go out and see the scenery associated with the city nothing like that there was just the room and then the usual window and that was it nothing outside for him to go out of and this was done on purpose no doubt to make sure that he could not escape but this is an interesting point because the next morning after they had placed him there in the hotel room those same officials went to that hotel room they opened it and they discovered that he was gone he was vanished there was absolutely no trace of him there anymore in that room um, they searched everywhere he was gone there was no way that he could have escaped because again the hotel room was several stories up it was something that did not have a balcony it only had that one single window and even if he would have jumped from that window he would either not have survived the jump itself or he would have caused no doubt a scene falling down in a busy place like that especially near the airport people would have noticed people would have reported people would have done something with regards to his attempted escape and so that was also ruled out and either they had a guard at the front of the door at all times that night because the uh, story that I was reading was saying that the guards quote unquote guards plural guards means that there were multiple people outside his door reported that they didn't see or hear him after the door was closed so there was nobody that saw him go out of that door nobody that even heard him do any activity inside the door so there was no rustling of sorts there was no drilling of sorts there was no tearing down of another wall the usual stuff you would think of if somebody were trying to escape a room um, and they, they didn't have anything but what they came in the room with so the idea again that he just vanished that's what is essentially the cherry to this story the cherry on top of this story so here you had a mysterious guy show up at an airport produced 100 percent legitimate documents for a country that does not exist and then on top of that 
being led to a hotel room. The next morning, he's gone. He's vanished. He's 100% not found anymore. And that's where the story ends. As mysteriously as he appeared at the Tokyo airport, as mysterious as he disappeared afterward. So who was this man from Taurid? Um, apparently, the theories associated with him is that he was a real person. Your average Joe, you and me. He, uh, some uh, regular human being but the catch is that somehow some way somewhere um, this man lived in a parallel type of dimension and um, all, for whatever reason one day his dimension had a portal had an accidental opening whatever but it, it accidentally caused him to go into our particular dimension kind of like if you were a big fan of DC Comics, you'd know that in that world, there's multiple universes, all sharing the same people. So you would have Bruce Wayne as one universe on one Earth, and then Bruce Wayne as another universe on another Earth, and so on and so forth. And so here you have this person, uh, same example, um, whoever he is, there in that universe in a country uh, with a country named Taurid, who suddenly one day found himself in our particular universe slash dimension, and that's where he was able to just come in, and then just as quickly as he came in, all of a sudden he went back. So maybe the dimensions corrected themselves maybe that portal whatever it was opened up again and caused him to go back to where he was whatever happened that's the going theory associated with him much like i was talking about um a couple of while back um check out this urban legend video that i did it's pretty popular it's it's the time traveling hipster there's the idea that this man somehow either purposely or accidentally found himself in a different time era maybe in some case this man from Tau Red is the same thing maybe he uh, not necessarily when it came when it comes to time but location uh, somehow he was in one particular earth and now he's in this earth and then he went back on there those are the going theories again no proof associated with that in fact there hasn't been any proof really associated with this story on there uh, as far as the actual like let's say airport where this happened the hotel that this happened apparently this is just an urban legend that came down from that area but if it did it hasn't really been discussed on any of the newspapers or any of the uh, TV shows during that time period it was just a story that somehow cre was created um, from word of mouth and then uh, pretty much just became a life of its own and carried on over again being in 1954 carried on over for a very long time thereafter up until today if even so that's the story associated with the man from Tau Red. has anybody else heard of this particular urban legend does anyone know of any other incidences associated with this strange man if so you know please post your comments share them below um, hopefully there's going to be something in the future with uh, actual concrete proof because if this truly happened if there was this visitation from another uh, earthling from another dimension and again the the number of people that he must have interacted with the customs agents the police officers the hotel workers whoever then there would have to still be people considering the timeline being 1954 again there would have to be people that could still be alive and could corroborate this information so hopefully that we'll, we'll get something along those lines in the future where people can start saying their real life experience and what they encountered when they met this man from Tower Red. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.